Hey, it's me, Pascal from Pixel, and welcome to another video. It's been a hectic and chaotic week. Uh, weird stuff happening all over. So not a lot of work got done. Today's video, I guess we're just gonna make it a Q&A. I asked for questions yesterday on uh, the YouTube community page. I got a bunch of questions. We're gonna dig in into those. Um, we're gonna do a video after, after the intro. After, right, after the intro. Oh, but before I actually dig into these questions, if you're here because you read the title of the video, which is obviously very likely, just a little context. Um, I'm a game developer, been a full-time game developer working on my own game. So I guess that's what we call indie as in independent game developer. I decide what I create and build and make. Been doing it since 2004. Uh, been releasing on pretty much every platform. So um, I have some experience and um, hopefully through this channel and through these videos, I get to share that experience with other developers. And uh, that's pretty much the context. So. Let's dive into questions. First question, Angelica, how do you avoid scope creep and do you have any tips for figuring out what features to cut? Um, scope creep is gonna happen pretty much every time. Um, even if you do a design document up front, um, I don't like doing those at all, but even if you have uh, pretty much planned out everything, it's gonna happen at some point, you're developing a game and a game is, n is not a static thing, it's a fluid thing. Uh, you'll figure out that certain things you thought would be fun won't be fun and then you come up with other ideas and then before you know it, there's scope creep. Uh, the only thing you can do is try to minimize and just try to be very clear about um, your goal, your deadline. When do, does this game need to be done, finished, wrapped up and shipped? And uh, based on that, you constantly modify your to-do list of things that, well, this doesn't really need to be in the game, push that to maybe an update or later, uh, remove it because we're not gonna meet that deadline. Uh, scope creep will always happen, it's just um, trying your best to actually manage it. Uh, second part of the question, have any tips for figuring out what features to cut? That's pretty much different per game. Um, you should always try to get the core mechanics of a game, the, the core idea up and running as quickly as possible. The first thing you should have up and running, then you know if the game is going to be fun and those features need to be in the game. Everything else is pretty much extra uh, and usually very cuttable. Uh, so it just depends on uh, do you still like the features you wrote down? Because if there are features that you think are now a bit stupid, you can easily cut those and then you're left with less, less features and then it's just a matter of how much time and work do these features need and can I easily implement them, yes or no? Based on that, you just make decisions and it's gonna be hard decisions, but um, it usually works out, I think. Uh, but scope creep is gonna be, happen anyway, so just uh, think about that and just keep a deadline, keep, keep that end goal inside the date that you want to have done, the month that you want to have done, and try to stick to that as much as possible. Um, Botastic, when can one go full-time in game development? If he, she is having a job, what is the right time to leave a job and go full-time game dev? Um, to be honest, and I wouldn't recommend people to become an independent game developer. It's very hard and you really need to know what you're doing. Um, I wouldn't personally recommend it, but of course it's a very attractive job and very interesting. Although, please watch my channel. It's not just about creating games, that's the easy part. It's about uh, selling those games and um, releasing on multiple platforms and just being out there with marketing and social media. And it's a lot of extra work that comes with it. If you are not prepared to do those things and you can't find a partner to do those things, then don't even start to become an independent game developer. Um, to quit a job, I would only do that if I actually had a game released and it does very well, then I would quit my normal day-to-day -day job if I had one. Um, I wouldn't quit a job before you release the game and actually see how it sells. Because trust me, selling games, most games sell terrible numbers. It's very hard, there's just so many games out there. Um, it's hard, it's difficult. I would simply not recommend doing it. That's that's an honest answer. <laughs> All right, more positive stuff. Um, one man show. How do you de how do you determine the selling price of your games? What goes into working out your costs? Um, I pretty much um, 
base it on a gut feeling of uh, how big my game looks. Not so much how big it is, but how big it looks to an audience, uh, how much content is there, um, and what is a bit of the average price in the marketplace. And this also differs per platform. Um, Residual, I'm working on that now for mobile. Of course, it's released on PC and Switch at $19.99. Bit on the high end, but that was together with the publisher. Um, you can't sell a game like that on Android or iOS at $19.99. You can't send, sell any mobile game at that price point. So obviously uh, there's a cap in the market. I know some publishers on mobile go for eight or $12 for a game. I don't think I'll do that. Residual is probably gonna sell at four or $5.99, something like that. It will be at the high end of my own games uh, because it's just a huge game. It has so much work evolved into it and not everybody's gonna buy it at that price. That's okay, but it is a certain value and we can't just ignore a certain value. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna screw up the whole ecosystem of game development if we just keep lowering our prices. Um, games require a lot of work, so there's value in there and figuring out the right price point also on PC. It's just, like I said, look at the content, the size of the game, how does it appear to the outside world? Not so much how much did you invest in it or time, but more how does it look and can you put a certain price on it? Um, and then compare it to similar type games on the same platform and then pick a magic number. That's that's pretty much how I do it. It's, it's, it's not really a science. All right, next question. How do you prevent yourself from doing game clones like Zelda, Mega Man? Um, first of all, I don't think creating clones is a, a bad thing per se. Of course, if you're gonna just do the exact same type of game, it's that's not very creative. And my whole point of being a game developer is the creativity. So I wouldn't do that. But like um, having another Super Mario-like game, but with changes and differences, that happened a lot. And that's pretty much how we got the current type of games that we have now and are very common. They are all built on top of other game and other genres and copies of that, but with a little twist, a little change, and eventually it evolves into new genres. Uh, for me personally, I just like trying out new stuff, combining genres or doing something I haven't done before. Uh, Real-time strategy games, never done one before, but it's slowly moving up my list of something I want to try. Uh, a beat em up, been talking about that for a while. Haven't done one myself, but just playing Shredder's Revenge on the Switch, I really want to create one. So I, for me, and, and to keep it interesting for me after all these years, I just like to do different and new things. Regulated City is something completely new. I don't think it really exists a game like this. Well, there are games like this, but they're not real time. They are usually turn-based or they are uh, not with the whole team, but just solo top-down shooters. I'm trying to mix up some stuff and sometimes it works out pretty well, sometimes it doesn't, but that keeps it interesting for me and creative. So that's how I avoid doing just clones of existing games. Nicholas, uh, how do you motivate yourself to keep on working on one project? I tend to easily jump. Uh, this is probably the most common uh, problem for all game developers. Um, finishing your project. It's great to start a new project and have all these this blank canvas and be able to do everything and add stuff and do things and then you did the thing you wanted to try out and it's up and running, but then there's like 90% of the work left. You need to make it uh, add more content, make it beautiful, make it shine, make it polished, make it, make it user friendly and all that work has to be done. Um, for me, I just like shipping games and completing games. Um, I guess I just got used to uh, powering through. And also you have to try to mix the, the boring stuff, the boring work with the fun work. So every now and then I'll have a bad day. Like last Tuesday, I wasn't really being very creative. So I started doing uh, the residual version on mobile and I had to do all the boring interface stuff, add touch controls, things like that. It's not creative, it's not fun, but I wasn't in the mood to do creative stuff anyway. I was a bit distracted by things. Um, so I worked on that stuff and you just mix those things up and then hopefully you'll reach the final stage of game development and that's releasing a game. And there's nothing more satisfying than just having a game completed and shipping. It's, it's, that's pretty much should be a goal to work towards. Not just create this type of game, but actually ship this type of game. And um, yeah, then you just have to force yourself to do the work. That's pretty much it. There's no easy answer. 
push yourself to complete a game. Uh, Lass, how do you do market research when you decide on your next game? No idea. I honestly, I know there's a lot of people and a lot of, uh, if you read a lot of newsletters and things about this, about, about game business, they will tell you to first check out if players will like this type of game and then make the game that players want. That's certainly one way to go. And if you're in it to make a lot of money, then go for the popular stuff. Pretty much, yeah, of course. Research what's popular now, make that and ship it. Uh, for me, that's not very satisfying. I'll look into those things, but they're not the type of games I want to make. I prefer making my own game. So I don't really do market research. Um, pretty much whatever you make, there is gonna be an audience for it. Uh, the problem is finding that audience. Of course, if you make something very popular, there's a huge audience, so it's gonna be very easy finding that audience. And if you make something that's very niche, that's there's gonna be less people that are interested in it, and finding those will be harder. So selling that game will be harder, but it doesn't mean that the game is less interesting or that there's a lesser interesting market for it, because sometimes niche stuff can sell for higher prices. So. Um, I don't really do market research, I just um, make the games I want to make and I think that's pretty much what independent game developer means. And of course you can try to just create the, the popular stuff, uh, in that case Google for the most popular games on Steam or on Switch or whatever, and try to make one of those games. Timothy, will there be an Orange Pixel Universe Brawl type game in the future? Um, it would be pretty cool, but then I have to figure out how to do uh, online multiplayer. Also, uh, that's pretty risky because an online multiplayer game needs the one thing I cannot create and that's uh, players. So that's why I've been forwarding doing multiplayer games mostly because it's very uncertain. You need a lot of marketing and, and stuff like that to attract all these players to your game and keep them playing or new players will simply not have any fun in a game because there are no opponents. So. Um, Maybe there will be some game where these uh, characters all come together and maybe do an adventure type thing. Not sure it's gonna be a brawler type game. Unless I do a beat em up and then have all my characters as characters in the game for some reason, but it wouldn't be multiplayer, I guess. TBGB, TB, TBGBU, TBGB. Another dude asking, do you have a target revenue per game? If so, can you share it? Um, that just depends on the game. It's pretty much um, calculating the amount of months I've worked on the game and then multiply that by 2000. But with the current economy, that's probably more 2200 or 2500 a month. Terrible time to be a game developer or pretty much a human being. So I don't have that target revenue at the start of a project. I just know if I want to create a bigger project or a smaller project and then I estimate how much month it will take to create this game and then multiply it by 2000 or 2500 that's pretty much just based on living costs in the netherlands uh, 2500 a month of course uh, there are other developers that will calculate the amount of hours pen uh, man hours that go into a game i think that's a bit silly if you're self-employed you should not be counting your hours like that or then you should just get a job where they actually pay you that amount of money per hour. Because even if I'm working on a game like now Regulator City almost, I think more than a year actually. Um, but in the meantime, all my other games are selling and I'm working on those as well, doing updates, doing discounts, doing sales to push up the amount of money they are making so they can work longer on Regulator City. Um, that pretty much balances things out. And then once Regulator City starts selling, um, it will be selling for many years after that at short amount or small amounts, but it will still be selling. Uh, so it will hopefully cover the cost, most of the cost I made making it and hopefully cover some of the cost of my next game. But uh, yeah, there's no set revenue. I just know that Regulated City needs to be done. I'm aiming for September to have it done and wrapped up. I might not release it in September, not saying that. I just um, aim to work towards September, have it done, uh, have it feature complete and able to ship if I need to. Other than that, uh, we'll see how much it makes. House of Stud, what are you using for source control? Um, I use Bitbucket, which runs on Git uh, pretty much. I don't wanna go technical. I don't use a lot of source control. I pretty much mostly use it as a backup. And every now and then when I screw up things, which of course rarely happens, 
every now and then I need to check what did I change that caused this to not function anymore. So, uh, but I work alone, so it's a lot easier for me, but still it's, it's Git, it's not really version control. There is a difference, I think. Uh, version control is mostly uh, you lock the code so nobody else can touch that part of the code. You make the changes, you commit it, and then somebody else can uh, use that code. And of course with Git, you can all work on the code at once and it helps somehow magically has to incorporate all those changes. Uh, so I'm not, I don't think I would use Bitbucket or Git if I was working on a project with multiple people, but that's just my opinion. Graham, um, like I've seen him before somewhere. Why do you not release paid DLC expansions for your game? Um, pretty much because um, I'm usually done with my games by the time I release them. Working on a game day in day out for over a year or longer, sometimes shorter, usually longer. I'm just completely done with those games at that time. Uh, also releasing DLC and expansion packs, that's probably only useful if your game has a, like a big audience and is very popular. My games aren't reaching that amount of popularity. So at some point I just keep pushing updates and fixes for uh, bugs and problems, but I won't be digging back into those things. I'd rather work on a sequel in that case. So uh, just not something I want to do. Also, uh, big companies doing DLCs and expansions they are big companies. They actually, uh, the main developers are working on the next game, but a second team or a third team is working on the DLC and expansion packs. I'm alone, so I have to work on my next game, pretty much. Check, any updates on your 3D games? Wh which 3D games? I don't have 3D games, or is that the question? Um, I want to do a 3D driving game together with Sirius Lion on the Discord. Um, we haven't really started on that one. I also want to do a first person shooter like the old days, Wolfenstein, games like that. Just haven't uh, found time for those either. So that's pretty much the update on my 3D games. Sebastian, game prototype in one day video. Um, yeah, been talking about that on the Discord. Just um, committing myself to the couch for like eight hours and creating a game from scratch, from start to finish, prototype at least, probably not a full game, and just recording that into a video. Uh, haven't really found the time to both uh, plan that thing, because I need to know how am I gonna record it, and shoot it, and what am I gonna do and show, and things like that, uh, and find a day that I can just sit on my couch for eight hours, and actually work on a game. It's still a fun idea, so it might happen at some point. All right, then that leaves us with two more questions. Uh, what's one plus one? Pretty sure it's two, or unless you put them next to each other, then it's 11. And another from Chibu 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 Show your cat. There's this one, Milo, first cat. We got 2D, our old one. Him is a little lady. Hello. Of course we have Loki, our new little one, but growing so fast, but he's still, he's still little. Yeah, little boy. We got Safi, Mr. Lazy, pretty much sleeps 26 hours in a day. No exaggeration, literally 26 hours in one day. He's awesome. He's the master of Zen. And finally, we have his sister, Nikki, which um, used to be very, uh, very active, but now she's also becoming an old lady. So she's sleeping a lot more as well. And that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. Um, everybody, it's, it's hot days, summer days. I know not everybody wants to be on YouTube, but thanks for watching even the guide the back Thanks for watching. See you. See you next week, I hope.